in acts of service, and we look forward to uh, welcoming you to maybe something new this year as you seek to see how God is empowering you to serve. And in that spirit of service, I'd like to invite Ms. Jan Boyer. Jan is our Human Care Committee Chair, and she's going to say a few words about an upcoming service opportunity, Operation in as much. Good morning. As um, Pastor Jonathan said, my name is Jan Boyer, and it is that time of year again for Operation in as much. We started Operation in as much about 14 years ago with Resurrection, identifying Operation in as much as a way to fulfill our longstanding commitment to outreach service. Um, it's a day of service that we go out into the community or some of the activities are here at Resurrection to go ahead and provide that community service to about 14 different organizations. And I'll tell you a little bit about more about that later. Operation in as much is based on the Matthew 2540 um, chapter that um, talks about uh, Jesus says whatever you did for the least of these my brethren you did for me so our operation as much is April 27th which is less than two weeks from today we start at 8 o'clock in the morning in the Family Life Center with a wonderful breakfast provided by the men so you don't want to miss that that's part of the service we gather at 8 o'clock and by 830 pretty much everybody's off to their activities many of them I said are here at Resurrection, others are off-site. There's building, there's landscaping, there's crafts, there's um, quilting, there's knitting, there's a lot of different things that you can sign up to do. Elementary school ages and to adult, and we will have nursery provided for those under five. And even if you can't uh, participate that Saturday, you can help us out. We have a team going out to Western Weight Crisis Ministry, and they're going to be working in the pantry. And we want to send them with a truckload of stuff. So out in the narthex, you'll see a basket with some examples and a list like this that you can take home. And it will tell you some of the um, specific items that they're asking for for the month of April. So you can bring those in, and there's barrels out in the narthex as well. There are several ways that you can sign up. One is out in the narthex, there's a green sheet here. It tells you all the activities you can sign up for, and on the back gives you a description, as well as tells you whether they're here or if they're off-site. The other way you can sign up is by in your announcement sheets, and on the website there's a link for Operation In As Much that you could just click on the link and go ahead and sign up. So it's a really fun day of service. If you haven't participated in the past, I hope that you will do it um, this um, coming um, 27th. Um, we usually have about 100, 125 people. It's just a wonderful gathering um, and a wonderful joyous day of service. So look forward to seeing you guys. If you have any questions, this sheet also tells you team leaders. So if you're wondering, and Miss Betsy is over here. Be wondering, oh, I really would love to knit some hats for preemies, but I'm not going to be able to be here. She'll give you the patterns, and she'll tell you, give you the, even give you the yarn, and so you can do it at home. So lots of different activities, and um, blessings on your worship, and, and have a good day. Thank you, Jan. Just one check-in with everybody. Does, is there anybody who does not have a time and talent sheet in their hand? It's this... Looks like it's got connect, serve, learn, grow at the top. Everybody got one? Anybody need a writing instrument, a pen or a pencil? You need anything? We don't want anybody going home saying they didn't have something to write with to fill it out. So. All right, I invite you to stand now as we begin in God's name. Our time of worship together. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet.
no sin. We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's first reading comes from the third chapter of the book of Acts of the Apostles. And while he clung to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astounded, ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. 
And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people. Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man the, this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Let us uh, read Psalm 4 responsibly. Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. O men, how long shall my honor be turned into shame? But now that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself, the Lord is my be angry and do not sin. Offer right sacrifices. There are many who say, who will show us some good? You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their, great, when their grain and wine abound. Today's epistle reading comes from the third chapter of the book of 1 John. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning 
also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one abides in him, no one who abides in him, keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. disciples were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the Gospel of the Lord. can have a seat. I'd like to invite the youngest worshipers to come up front for a message with me. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all doing today? Good. Nice to see you. Did you have a nice Easter? Yeah. Okay. Well, we heard three readings today from the Bible, and the first one was a story about two of Jesus' followers, Peter and John. And Peter and John were on their way to church. They were going to the temple in Jerusalem, and there was a blind man outside. This comes before the story we heard, but it's still important. And uh, this is a man who, who was unable to walk. He was disabled. His legs did not work. So he was standing there asking for money so that he would have enough to buy food and all those sorts of things. When Peter and John came by, they looked at him and they said, we, have some, we don't have silver and gold to give you, but we have something even better. In the name of Jesus, we say to you, get up and walk. You know what he did? He got up and he walked. And not only that, we read that he walked into the temple. He was walking and leaping and praising God. He was so happy. He understood what that Easter joy means. It was more than just uh, having more money to buy bread that week. It meant he was restored. His health was restored, and he had a new understanding of life. Well, as you can imagine, all the people gathered around. A little crowd kind of developed. And so Peter stood up and spoke. And he said, why do you guys look at us as if we did anything here? It wasn't us. It was faith in the name of Jesus. It because this happened in Jesus' name, 
that this man stands before you healed today. And he said, you know what? If you will simply return to God, know that your sins in Jesus are blotted out, that gift of life can be yours too. And that was his invitation. So not only did he help this lame man, but he also had something to say about Jesus. Now, you guys, as we come together here, probably at home too, I'm thinking, when, you, when, you, when we're talking about Jesus, sometimes we say, where we do something and we say, in Jesus' name. Can you tell me what that is? What do we do and say, in Jesus' name? A prayer. That's right. You know why we say, in Jesus' name, at the end of the prayer? Why do you think we do? Tough question. What does in Jesus' name mean when we say it? Well, we're asking God something, and we're it's kind of like we're saying, and Jesus is on my side. I'm with Jesus. Jesus is with me. That's his promise to us, right? Jesus, in this Easter season, we remember, didn't stay dead in the tomb, right? He came back to life. And he's living. We don't see him with our eyes today, but we know he lives in our heart. He lives here among us. And he gives us opportunities to be helpers, to do things for others. And that's why today is a very special day. It's our Time and Talent weekend. And uh, we think of ways that we can be helpers, too. You guys are helpers here at Resurrection. I know you probably are at home too, but there's always things that we can think about to think of new ways that we can help and be open to having other people help us. It takes a humble heart sometimes to let somebody help us, but we can do that too. All of it we can do and pray that God helps us do it in Jesus' name, okay? So I'm going to say a prayer to help us to help us stay focused on how to help. Is there anything special that you guys would like me to pray for today? And if not, I'll just say a prayer. But I like to ask that question sometimes. I'll just say a prayer. How about that? Okay, you want to fold your hands, close your eyes, and we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father thank, you thank you that Jesus lives. That Jesus lives. He lives in my heart. He lives among us here, and he helps me to help others too. Show us the way that we can help others together with Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thanks very much. You guys can go back to your seat, and we'll continue with the end of the day.
from God our Father, our loving Lord and Savior, who lives, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is the second of a five-week sermon series on the book of Acts. It's focused on the question, how do I serve? Last week, our attention was on that early first century church community all gathered together, taking care of each other, providing for one another's needs, and witnessing to the risen Christ to one another. Today, that camera focuses in a little bit on not just the group, but on individuals in the group. First, on a man who was served by the community, especially by two of them, Peter and John, but then also a wider group that was served by the proclamation of St. Peter as he brought the meaning of that event, that serving of a disabled man, what it means that Jesus Christ was living and that in his name this event took place. It's a word of encouragement for you and me. An encouragement that we are not in this alone. When it comes to service, we serve together with the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. But it's also a word of direction. In our service to others, God calls us to testify to Jesus and to Jesus alone. God calls us to do as Peter did, to point the way to the one who is the source of our Easter life the one who is the author and the giver of life, giving us what we need to serve him and others too. You and I, God's Easter people, are accompanied and empowered by the risen Christ. We serve as people who do what we do because the crucified and resurrected Lord Jesus is the one who works in us, and he is truly the one who is giving life to the world. How blessed it is to receive Easter life. What joy to live out that gift of eternal life, God's gift for the world. Take a moment and consider the story that's before us today. Then consider your own personal story and what connections there may be between it and what we're reading about. We read in this Two-parter, I guess you might say. We get the second part really in our text, but what comes before is just as important. We find out it's all about Jesus. That's what St. Peter says to the man that he heals when he heals him in his name. And it's the same message he gives to the people who gather around amazed at what has happened. Let me set the stage for you. It's the middle of the afternoon. The last time for prayer before the evening starts to encroach in. And people are gathering in the Jerusalem temple because that's what you do. You go up to the temple to pray. There were offerings, incense offerings that went up. And as the smoke went up into the heavens, it was an image of the prayers of Israel going up too. Disabled man who was brought every day, we read, by his family and friends, every day, is sitting at the entrance to the temple. Imagine the love and the sacrifice that went in to just making sure he was there in that spot. And it's here, as people are going in, he knew that he could simply put out his hands and those who were giving alms would give him something. It would be enough to bring him another meal. Of course, it was only a measure of what God intended for him, but it was something. Peter and John were about to give him so much more. As they approach him, his hands are probably up, but instead of simply dropping money in his hands like perhaps so many did, they take a moment, they look him in the eye, and they say, look at us. And as he, does, as, as he looks at them and makes that kind of on, that eye contact, as they connect with this man in his own state of poverty, Peter says, we don't have silver or gold to give to you, but what we do have, we give. In the name of Christ, Jesus Christ, arise and walk. Who 
Those were words that Peter had heard Jesus say time and time again as Jesus healed those who were disabled, as Jesus even raised the dead. And it's as he gives him his hand and the man gets up, we read that not only did he walk, but he walked and he leapt and he went into the temple praising God. He seemed to know that it wasn't Peter and John who were doing it. They were simply instruments of God to be at work in his life as one who was served by them. You think that the RLC Narthex is a happy place on a Sunday morning? You can only imagine just how much joy there was in the temple that day for him and his family as they went in. But it doesn't take long before a crowd forms. And as people start to cluster together, Peter makes it immediately clear to everybody what has just happened, repeating what he has said in effect to the disabled man. Why do you wonder at this, he says to the spectators. Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus, whom Jesus named, by faith in Jesus' name, this man whom you see and know has been made strong. Faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of all. And so in this healing of the body and wholeness, as important as that was, Peter had a message that would point the people to something else. Something that that wholeness of body can only point ahead to. Because as we know only too well, that disabled man all the people that Jesus healed during his earthly ministry, all of them would once again get sick, become disabled, and die. But Jesus points ahead to something else. He talks about how the people had put Jesus to death, but yet how Jesus had used that as an opportunity to cause Jesus to be the author of life. The Father glorified Jesus whom you put to death, he said. And in that event, in that resurrection event, life was to be found, not only for those who consider Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob their fathers, but for all the world. And no doubt, the Roman government and you and I are also complicit in Jesus' death because it was our sins that put him on that cross. This man was healed. His healing gave Peter and the other disciples the chance to speak more about Jesus Christ, the Lord of life. And that's how it is when service happens. There are people who receive that service and there are people that are standing on the sidelines watching what's happening. And it's an opportunity for us to speak to the one who serves together with us. All who turn to him have their sins blotted out. That's the promise St. Peter gave to the people in the crowd that day, and the same holds true 2,000 years later. Now, you and I might not readily think of physical healing as a gift from God's hand, but physical healing, no matter how it takes place, whether it's the expertise of medical professionals, whether it's through prescribed medications, whether it's through the application of some type of therapeutic maneuvers or whether it's some kind of surgical intervention, whatever it is, God is working through that event. The fact that a person gets better is more than just dumb luck. It's more than simply an automatic response to things that's based on purely scientific reasoning. It's a kind of mystery. It's a gift from God's hand. All physical healing, no matter how ordinary or miraculous, is temporary. Because of the all company problem of sin, the consequences for sin and death itself, even eternal death, separation from God, all physical healing is simply a kind of a brief glimpse of the life that God intended for us. Life that Jesus Christ made possible for us. Life that his victory over 
death and the grave now opens up for you and me and for all the world. And we know that in our baptism we have taken part together with the death of Jesus and his resurrection so that we have through faith died to sin and live for him. Now, that victory over sin in the grave, the only healing that's forever, the healing of the living and resurrected Lord Jesus Christ for you and for me and for all who fall asleep in him, that is something that God uses through our service, the message of that, to bring it to a world in need. And sometimes he does it through our service, almost in spite of us. I'd like to tell you a little story about that, give you an idea of what I'm talking about. First surgery I ever had was a long time ago. Long before Julie and I were married, long before I was a pastor or even had an inkling I would even be a pastor one day. It just so happens I was coming out of surgery, went to recovery, and then went to a special room where I would have to stay and heal, and I had a roommate in that room. Now, of course, having a roommate at a hospital can be an inconvenience, but it can also be, you know, if you hit it off with that person, it can be kind of a nice thing, too. And it just so happened that this other patient that I shared the room with, I'll call him Mr. S, was a guy that liked to talk. <laughs> but let me just say, the things he talked about were serious. His illness was much, much, much more serious than mine. And because of the prognosis he'd gotten from his doctor, he had become almost flip, almost kind of cynical of whether it was worth making any effort in the future at all. And somehow it seemed the conversation at his instigation always sort of meandered back to matters pertaining to religion and faith. Well, his family, he told me, was superstitious. They had these stickers, you see, that he was supposed to uh, put on himself, stickers that some uh, religious professional had blessed. And the thinking was, if he could just find where that sick part was, put the sticker on that spot, that would get better somehow. He didn't believe in any of it, but he did it simply because he knew it would comfort his family if he went along with the whole thing. Then at one point, during my stay, you know, friends would come and visit, we would talk. One particular friend just happened to be a pastor. And this person came, we talked, we had a nice conversation, all I suppose out of earshot of my roommate. And before he left, what did he do? But he said a prayer for me. After that was over, Mr. S turned and said, that guy was a pastor, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, I replied. I could tell you enjoyed the visit, I said, well, yeah, to be honest, I did. He's a friend, and we had a nice talk. He said, you know, that would really be different from any of the religious people I know visiting. That would almost be kind of like a death sentence, if you know what I mean. And then a little later, he added, I wonder if that's what makes the Christian faith different. Finally, it's like God is hammering me on the head, you know. Open up the chance for me to talk a little bit briefly and uncomfortably about what Easter faith was. Something I hadn't really done before, wasn't sure if I was saying the right thing, but, you know, I had that chance. He listened, he smiled, he thanked me, he closed his eyes, and he went to sleep. We never spoke of it again, but I believe that that brief conversation with him, the visit from my pastor friend, made a difference. In the end, you see, it's not really so much about our expert theological conversations over matters pertaining to faith. Not that theology isn't important, but that's not what it's all about. In the end, it's not about our heroic efforts to serve, to outdo good somebody else or to get noticed, or to rack up, you know, service points somewhere with someone. That's not what it's about. In the end, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. An act of service rendered in association with prayer we offer up in Jesus' name. An act of service that we do knowing that Jesus is with us, giving us his encouragement in the process. An act of service that we receive from somebody else in humility 
because that person is doing it in Jesus name also all of it adds, answers the question how do we serve we serve together with the resurrected Christ and with that in mind I invite you in just a moment to take out your time and talent sheets consider what you will put on them if you haven't already filled them out I know some of you are ahead of the game you already got them ready to go but to actually take a moment and think about how is God calling me to serve together with the risen Christ in this place? Will it be in helping facilitate small group ministry? Will it be in caring for other people who are part of this congregation? Will it be somehow reaching out with the love of God in concrete acts of service to somebody who hasn't experienced that before or maybe even crossing cultural barriers and making a bridge with somebody somewhere. Whatever it might be, you and I do not serve alone. We serve together with the risen Christ. We are Jesus' Easter people. And for that reason, I invite you to say a prayer together with me. We pray. Father in heaven, thank you that you've done it all in giving us the gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus. You have caused us to die to our sins together with Christ and have raised us to eternal life through the water of holy baptism. Pour out now your spirit on us today as we offer up ourselves to serve you and your people. Give each of us a path to serve. Give each of us the humility to receive acts of service performed to us. And bless us as we do. We offer up this prayer because of the all-sufficient service of your own dear Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to stand as we confess our faith, the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Go ahead and share that peace of the resurrected Christ with those around you this morning. As you all find your seats, it is the time you have all been waiting for with great anticipation of all service. During our offering songs, you guys can fill out your time and talent sheets. It's also a time that you can bring it up and place it up here in the basket here in the beginning or here in the beginning of the sanctuary. Um, don't wait for somebody else to come up. Maybe you're that first person to do it, okay? Your first act of service of time and talent is to be the first person to bring this up, okay? Anytime, feel free to place it in the basket in the front of the sanctuary throughout our offering song.
invite you to stand for prayer. Let us pray. Receive, O oh Father, these fruits of the earth and the products of our labors, which we offer to you in token of the sacrifice of our lives. Accept them, we pray, through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people, according to their needs. Gracious Lord, you are our resurrected Savior. And because you have risen from the dead, because you are victorious over our sin, over death and the devil, and we are united together with you for all eternity, Lord, we are encouraged to go out and serve with your resurrected spirit. That because we are united with you, because we know everything that you have done for us, Lord, you send us out to proclaim that message to those that you place before us. So, Lord, please bless us as your congregation. Bless us as your church. And bless these time and talent sheets and these opportunities that you place before us. That we may serve with you, recognizing that we don't do this on our own. We don't go and serve for our own purposes or for any random reason. But all of it is to point others to you. So no matter what our area of service may be, whether it be one that brings us great joy or is one of labor, may it all be for your glory. May we point others to you. And may you use these opportunities of service, both new and old, to proclaim your resurrection message and draw others closer to you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Healing Savior, we see many stories throughout Scripture of you bringing healing and wholeness to those in need. So Lord, we ask that you may continually work your healing hand now. Lord, be with Sue, Carolyn, and John, Jean and Lois, Tony, Emma, Doug, and Alice. Be with Paul, Patricia, Jean, Pam, Betty, Eve, and Beth. Be with Sarah. And Lord, all those that we name in our hearts, whatever their needs may be, May you enter into their lives with your comfort and peace. Bless all doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers, Lord, that you use for your glory. Lord, that as they use their time and talents and service to you through these, your children, you may use them still. Be also with the family and friends of Marvin upon his passing. Lord, that those in their mourning may be strengthened by your resurrection word. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. And Lord, you have scattered your church all throughout the world. And as you have placed us in specific areas for your service and glory, some of your church, Lord, face great persecution. May you be with them in their times of sorrow, need, and fear, that they may continually be built up by your resurrection promise, knowing what you have awaiting for them. May you also bring peace to our war-torn areas of this world. Bring peace to Ukraine, Gaza, and Israel. That you may also bless the leaders of those countries with your wisdom, grace, and mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Lord, we ask continually that you may be with the youth of this congregation. Especially today, do a chase, Lauren, and Angel as they deliver their faith statements in our later services. That Lord, you may use these, their time and their talents. To proclaim your resurrection word to those that you place before them today. That you may bless them with boldness to continually carry out your resurrection work in all the areas that you send these youth. That they may always point others to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. As we serve and as we are served, the benediction of the Lord goes with us. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.